Howard Wilson Coles is often described as a trailblazer, a role model, a force for change, and the kind of person you would expect to see commemorated on a stamp or a coin. Yet Coles spent most of his life in Rochester, New York, and the story of how he worked passionately to improve the local community is not well known outside of this region. The Rochester Museum and Science Center is very fortunate to care for the Howard W. Coles collection, an extensive archive of the personal papers of Howard Coles and materials he collected related to the African-American community in Rochester to ensure that we remember his example. Cole's daughter and granddaughter donated this important resource to the museum in 1998, two years after Cole's passed away. When you examine the materials in this collection, you can see that Cole's knew from a very early age how important and empowering it was for African Americans to have accurate knowledge of their cultural heritage. With this goal always in mind, Cole's became a self-educated pioneer in many different fields a groundbreaking print and broadcast journalist, an historian and author, a sociologist, an activist, and a humanitarian. In 1933, Coles founded and published The Voice, later called the Frederick Douglass Voice, with money borrowed from his life insurance policy. The newspaper gave voice to the concerns and interests of Rochester's African Americans for more than 60 years. It became the longest continuously published African-American newspaper in Rochester history. In 1938, a local radio station hired Coles as Rochester's first African-American radio announcer. But remember this, they all worked in the mines and the mills. And they were all friendly, they were all understanding, and most of the time uh, there was a meeting of minds, and somehow or another they got along. For 40 years, Howard developed radio shows, including The Gospel Hour and The King Cole Show, opening doors for other African Americans into the field of broadcast journalism. After the depression of the 1930s, Coles surveyed local African Americans to learn more about the impact on this community. In 1939, Coles produced the first survey of African American housing conditions in the state and was appointed to the city's housing committee to help improve the poor and unhealthy conditions documented in that survey. Coles also produced the City Directory of Negro Business and Progress, 1939 to 40, and showed that progress continued to be made despite setbacks. After investigating and reporting problems, Coles always found ways to create change. He became a real estate agent and helped buyers get loans from local banks that had discriminated against them, successfully improving housing conditions for many African Americans in the city and in area migrant farm camps. Coles also called upon African Americans to patronize the services of African American professionals and Black-owned businesses to support the community from within. He even ran for public office to, as he put it, plant the seeds of the idea that these sorts of things weren't unattainable even to blacks. Always actively researching and writing about his interests, in 1941, Coles authored and published The Cradle of Freedom, a scholarly history of African Americans in Western New York dedicated to his daughter, Joan. Many more manuscripts in the Coles collection, now at the Rochester Museum and Science Center, were never published. Coles was also an expert on the life and writings of Frederick Douglass and made sure Rochester remembered his hero. Coles reestablished Rochester's annual Douglass Day celebrations and was instrumental in getting the Douglass stamp issued in 1967. Following the Rochester race riots of 1964, Coles helped organize the FIGHT organization, which stands for Freedom, Integration, God, Honor, Today, and draft its constitution. He also helped establish Action for a Better Community, an anti-poverty agency to serve Rochester and Monroe County. Howard Coles served as the first local president of both the National Negro Congress and the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, also known as the NAACP. Coles' career as a social innovator did not yield financial rewards or make him a household name. He did receive numerous awards and honors, including the Loftus C. Carson Human Rights Award for dedication to the advancement of human rights, 
and nomination for the NAACP Spring Iron Medal, recognizing the highest achievement by an African American. In 1994, Congresswoman Louise Slaughter even presented him with the flag flown over the United States Capitol in honor of his efforts. Yet what's most inspiring about his legacy is that a person fighting patiently against the odds for the things he believes in can affect change. And this message is as important today as it was in Cole's day.